Now one of the main areas of usage in most households is hot water. If you have an electric hot water service, either roof mounted or ground mounted, typically it can account for at least 30% of your total electricity usage for the year. So if you have a bill of say $4,000 a year or $1,000 a quarter, then around 30% of this, um, you know, approximately $1,200 would be your water consumption cost for this account. That's your water component for this electricity account. If we could reduce this $1,200 component by half, then we save not only $600 a year in real money, but we also save all those extra kilowatts that was used for this as well, and thereby reducing the size of the solar system we need to eliminate the bill. Now, the way to do this is something with something called a solar heat pump. Now, most of you would be familiar with traditional solar hot water units. You know, big fat tanks sit on the roof with a couple of panels. This is old technology for this industry. Still works, but old technology. The new technology are heat pumps, and they look like this. Some of the benefits include a higher efficiency return than traditional solar hot water units, and you don't need any solar panels to make them work. This is how they work. They look very similar to your old one, and they replace your existing electric hot water unit outside of the house. And most often they can be placed in exactly the same location as the old one, so no fuss with piping and so forth. On top of the upright tank is a refrigeration unit and a fan, which sucks the heat out of the air and converts it into a gas. That gas turns, a, or I should say that gas runs around a coil on the inside of the tank, which then heats the water up evenly. Now, as there's no actual contact with the water, in other words, no element like in most units, you don't have any corrosion issues or need to replace coils every five years or so. You also don't get the disbursement of water while it's heating that gives you the odd flash of cold water while you're in the, uh, while you're in the shower, and that's something that uh, you know, most would be used to with traditional hot water units. The unit itself has no backup element to heat the tank. It doesn't need it. When you plug the unit into the electricity socket, you're actually running the refrigeration unit and the fan, not heating the hot water. The converted heat from the air does that. Now, many of the other heat pumps on the market do have a backup element, which, I don't know, in my mind sort of defeats the purpose of putting in a solar heat pump in the first place, in my opinion. Anyway, without a doubt, the main benefit of this product is the very short recovery times. Traditional hot water units usually kick in at about I don't know, 10 p.m. at night or so, and they go through to about 6 a.m. in the morning. And all the while heating the water and racking up your electricity bill at the same time. Now, this solar heat pump will run any time of the day or night as needed, but usually only runs for a few hours, meaning that you save money even if you're not heating during off-peak times. Let, let me give you an example. Assume you have a household with six people, and we allow 50 litres of hot water a day per person, which is a lot just for hot water. So that's 300 litres a day. Now a 340 litre unit, which is the most common one for larger households, would be what we need in this case. So let's, let's go over the numbers. We take the number of people in the household, that's 6, and we multiply by 50 litres a day, which gives us 300 litres. Then we divide that number by 75. Now this number is worked out based on average temperature in our state and the size of the system and so forth, but that's the number for now. Now that gives us a figure of four, and this represents the approximate time it will take to recover a unit of this size, about four hours. Now that's around half of what a traditional electric hot water unit would do. We then multiply this by a tariff rate of, you know, say 26 cents, and then by 365 days for the year, and we end up with $379.60 total cost for the year, or just over a dollar a day for your hot water usage. Now let's round that up to say $450 a year and let's be a bit conservative about the whole thing. Now what was our original bill? It was $4,000 with 1,200 approximate hot water component in that bill. Now by installing a solar heat pump we've actually saved $750 approximately off the cost of the total annual electricity bill and reduced the cost of the hot water component by more than 60%. Plus you've saved a percentage in the corresponding kilowatts as well. Now if we redo our calculations for our solar system, we can look at a system possibly one kilowatt, maybe one and a half kilowatts smaller than we were originally considering, giving us the savings in our upfront costs as well. Now you still have to pay for the solar heat pump, which needs to come into your figures too, but you get the idea. By reducing your real costs first, you give yourself more flexibility to do it right. 
and uh, you know it's not always necessary to go to this extent when you have the roof space available but if you don't have the roof space available this is certainly one of the areas that we look at to try and make sure that you're ahead of the game. Just so you know we use Quantum Eco Hot Water Heat Pumps. This is a Melbourne based company that has been producing hot water units for more than 30 years and they're a leader in their field. Now you can check them out for yourself online or check out the video on our website under the Q&A section. Now before we move on, let me address a couple of concerns some people have about these units, or rather about heat pumps in general. As with all things, not all heat pumps are created equal. The biggest objection I hear about this type of product is that it won't work in the cold weather, so, you know, like the Adelaide Hills for example. It is true that all heat pumps are based on the amount of heat in the air, but only quantum heat pumps can still operate at peak efficiency rates in temperatures as low as minus 10 degrees Celsius. In fact, our number one selling area in South Australia is in fact the coldest area, the Adelaide Hills. The second highest selling area is Victor Harbour. So for those naysayers who think that the ocean will also cause you know, insurmountable problems. Not so with a quantum unit. Now some will tell you that the refrigeration unit too will break down after a while and cannot be relied upon. Let me just state again, this is a very high quality heat pump, the market leader, and I've personally never had any issues with any of my clients. In fact, I remember talking to um, one of the state reps for SA some time ago who told me that they have such a small percentage of faults that they only have one repair guy for the entire state. And he spends most of his time running training meetings on the product as <laughs> there's really not enough work to keep him busy full time. You know, at the end of the day, a quality heat pump means solar without the sun. So that's very cool.